Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, today here. My name is Roberto Palacin from uh, Newcastle University, uh, where I'm a, a reader in Transport Futures and also contributor to this, to this event. And this event is organized through uh, the EPSRC Network H2 Network for uh, hydrogen fueled uh, transportation, which is part of a series uh, looking at different aspects of hydrogen research in the transportation sector. And today we are looking at, at applications uh, in, in, the, in the sector of, 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 of railways. So we will be welcoming, uh, welcoming three, three speakers today on the subject of, of hydrogen and rail, of course, uh, and they will give us some, some, some feedback from different aspects and different stakeholders in the applications of hydrogen from network rail to Siemens and of course, and some uh, startups looking at transitional and very innovative technologies to bridge the gap between current propulsion systems and future clean systems. We have asked a speaker to do, present for around 20 minutes. And the next presentation is from Chris Smith, and he will be introducing himself and Gvolution, a company that he co-funded 13 years ago uh, to exploit a technology looking at multi-fuel combustion. So, Chris, please. Thank you very much, Roberto, and thank you everybody for, for bearing with us on a Friday afternoon. Uh, my name is, is Chris Smith, and uh, I'm here with Shimon Shapiro. Uh, our focus really is on, on practical um, steps towards net zero, which are cost-effective and deliverable in, in the current environment. So whilst we have hydrogen as one of the fuels that we talk about, it's not the only fuel because uh, we, we, we perceive that there is uh, more than one answer possibly to the question of, of net zero in this context. Um, the principle behind Gvolution really was that there are a lot of diesel engines in the world and they are very efficient. The conflation tends to be, and I see that particularly in the rail industry, but generally, a diesel engine, um, it, it has to run on diesel fuel. And uh, that's where Gvolution believes that it's possible to bring cleaner and greener fuels into the environment um, uh, and the infrastructure now, which can demonstrate use of fuels like hydrogen in, in the future. And that's what we've pioneered and been working on for the last, trying to run diesel engines on cleaner fuels, like I said. Um, so, they are cost effective, they are retrofitted dual fuel technology, which delivers lower cost and lower carbon in the current environment. The idea of dual fuel is that you can use two fuels at the same time. So you can run on diesel and natural gas, diesel and hydrogen, diesel and bio LPG. Uh, and we are currently in the next month, two months, three months, delivering two examples of this uh, dual fueling into the UK rail sector. UK is one of the only countries we work in which doesn't have natural gas as a transitional fuel, um, but many other countries do. And it's one of the few countries that has bio LPG uh, available. Um, and in this context, our offer is, is, it is not really embraced, I would say, by, by, by the policy. Uh, but the idea was that it can be done. And in doing so, it gave opportunities to bring other fuels into that environment. So the concept, uh, which, for example, uh, you know, Grand Centre is running a class 180 on dual fuel diesel and natural gas, uh, demonstrates both the infrastructure, the operational requirements, uh, the cost savings, and the emissions benefits. And uh, we, that's really what we are in the business of trying to do. If I go back to where we started, we did a feasibility sponsored by the RSSP about class 156, uh, it's done mostly by Shimon, uh, and that was to demonstrate dual fueling with diesel and natural gas. Uh, we uh, put an engine to a test cell, uh, did a lot of route modeling, processed the data based on our own experience and our own technology, and we could demonstrate significant reduction in diesel use, significant reduction in carbon, and based, of course, on the price of the fuel, significant reductions in uh, operating costs. We also did quite a lot of modeling around uh, how the other fuel could be put onto the vehicle and how it could be supplied with infrastructure. And that was put together in a, it's a publicly available document, I think, which demonstrates uh, that it's feasibly deliverable right now. We then found a customer, uh, Richard McLean and Mary Hewitt at the Riva Group, Grand Central, open access operator, who said that they would like to try um, developing a, a vehicle to see if it could be shown to work. Because 
many of the ideas we've seen during the day um, are brilliant ideas, and I think they're fantastic to imagine, but they are not necessarily available right now. And the idea was to give steps that you could take right now, which would make a difference to the carbon footprint of, of, of the railways and demonstrate how other fuels can be used in this context. So here, over the last couple of years, it's taken us much longer than we would like. We have uh, developed a dual fuel class 180 running on, on, on diesel and uh, biomethane. Uh, we've, um, we've delivered our own dual fuel technology into that environment. And uh, we've been through the rail approvals of getting the use of LNG approved uh, by the network. That is a huge task, actually. And one of the things I think somebody mentioned uh, during the, the, the discussion uh, we had earlier was how it's important to try and work together on these things. And I strongly agree with that. I think there's an enormous amount of work and great difficulty in, in getting these fuels for approval, uh, particularly on a vehicle which, like this one, is moving fast. Um, but uh, we have been through that process and we have proved that you can do it. And that's with the help of the RSSB and uh, does give us a, 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 you know, a strong belief that we can uh, deliver that, this kind of technology into a much broader environment. Uh, as you can see there, we've seen a reduction in diesel use of 29% uh, because it is a bio LNG, that's a reduction in net carbon emissions and delivers a cost saving at the same time. Parallel to that, funded by Innovate, we've delivered a Class 73 network rail uh, vehicle uh, running on a QSK, Cummins QSK-19, running on diesel uh, bio-LPG. Again, same thing went into a test cell, demonstrating uh, fuel consumption and uh, gaseous and particular emissions. Um, we went through a number of duty cycles, and there again, we used, uh, we demonstrated a 25% reduction in diesel use, 25% reduction in net carbon, and a 13% operating cost savings. Again, that's been through the full network approvals, and uh, we'll go into trial in quarter one or quarter two, 2022. <laughs> Against that background, we have been in discussions with a number of freight operators to try to demonstrate the technology. And we've also been researching and modeling some heavier duty vehicles, because although this does have application in specific uh, uh, passenger uh, vehicle applications, it's really freight where we believe that you can make significant differences. And uh, Shimon really has carried out this work, uh, partly funded by the RSSB and partly funded by us, uh, to demonstrate dual fuel in uh, Class 37 and Class 66 uh, locomotives. The concept there is that if you were to repower the vehicles, uh, then you would get a lot of efficiency through repowering. But at the same time, with a much more modern engine, you can do a much better job of multi-fueling that engine. So we've done uh, a large amount of modeling about that. We have actually developed a number of uh, these engines, uh, you know, proven and shown um, in America and in the UK. Um, there's a number of, of shunters operating on dual fuel in the UK that we have, you know, put, put the technology into. But as well as demonstrating the, the, the uh, dual fuel engines, we've also been modeling with um, Shimon's work at a number of universities the concept of diesel, diesel methane dual fuel, the concept of diesel propane dual fuel, diesel hythane dual fuel, which is uh, a, a, a gas. It's a sort of, it's a term for methane and hydrogen, where you have up to 20% hydrogen within the natural gas. So obviously the, the whole infrastructure is a lot easier to deliver. And also diesel hydrogen, um, which uh, is quite a well-established um, technology, and it's been quite demonstrated in a number of cases. Um, so we've done uh, route modeling along those designs and also some CAD modeling of the locomotives. In that report, which again, for people who want to, you can see significant reduction in diesel use, uh, up to 66%, significant saving in operating costs. And that goes for both the class 36, uh, 36 37 and, and the 66. Here's some pictures, which uh, are, you know, are a result of, of the CAD modeling that was carried out. I think one of the, we've also discussed earlier, that one of the challenges about hydrogen, apart from kind of the cost of it, uh, the energy density is really a, a big issue. And in these models, you can see that because there is a great deal more energy density in natural gas, 
and in in propane, uh, we've got the, the the tanks that allow the vehicles to run, I wouldn't say their full duty cycle without inhibition, because the class 180 is certainly slightly limited in its uh, in its range. But in these uh, freight vehicles, they can carry on most of the uh, most of the activities required uh, for most of the um, requirements they have. So that's uh, that's one set of model, and, and and you can see that we've done um, this one running on uh, biomethane and, and biopropane in the same kind of a context. So with hydrogen, where we have really only uh, modeled this, we haven't actually got a hydrogen dual fuel uh, train on the track. But what we have done is uh, our own uh, calibration and, and measurements around the level of substitution. And we would anticipate uh, that in a repowered version of one of these uh, locomotives, you'd be looking at 55% substitution uh, of diesel by hydrogen and a consequent, assuming it's, assuming it's a green hydrogen, uh, like, like the biogas, you'd see a, a consequent reduction in, in carbon emissions. So um, it's clearly something which is, uh, which is ongoing. Uh, the reason why I say all of these things like, I think are interesting in this context is because we are always looking at ways that you can actually do something today that contributes to tomorrow. So if you were to demonstrate that you could run freight train on hydrogen, which somebody has mentioned today that you could, although um, possibly uh, requiring uh, you know, an additional carriage for the hydrogen. Uh, what you really need to develop hydrogen infrastructure is you need somebody using and paying for the hydrogen in a regular way. I think uh, Stephen said that, that you know, the idea of an anchor client for the use of the fuel is rather a critical thing. And what we perceive is that if you were to develop this technology in these kind of uses, you, you would become a user of, of the fuel and that would then make it uh, available for investment because people would uh, then in, invest in the infrastructure, it would be used. And at the same time, you could overcome the many, many hurdles uh, of getting uh, vehicles approved for use on the network with, the, with these other gases. So in terms of you know, steps progression, we think that if you start with a diesel engine, it's important to understand that you might have it for another 10, 15, 20, 30, if we're honest, 30 years, uh, certainly in, in, in some other countries. And if you can run it on cleaner fuel, you can get rid of a large chunk of the carbon used today, and you can still make use of the sunk carbon in the asset that you've got. If the pricing is right, uh, which we've also talked about today, you know, if, if you've got a, a higher price for diesel because it's properly taxed or it's carbon taxed, and hydrogen or biogases are much, much greener, and therefore cheaper, then there is a, a very easy business model to demonstrate both the use of the uh, fuel uh, in the railways at scale, uh, which could then be followed by uh, the other technologies which have been talked about today. So that's the kind of G-Volution vision. We have other technologies which would follow that route, which are slightly different to those that have been demonstrated today, but which are engaged more with the use of biofuels as well as hydrogen rather than just hydrogen. And again, I think that one of the points I've taken out of today's discussion has been that it, it's frustrating to see that the British government doesn't embrace a strategic direction for net zero. Therefore, we, we have to think about kind of the practical deliverable alternatives to that and get customers on the network, such as Grand Central or Colas Network Rail or anyone else who's interested to engage in, in the process of actually delivering um, locomotives and other rail vehicles, which, which can, can uh, demonstrate what is, what is practically possible today and which can show us the pathway to tomorrow. So, uh, so with apologies for not being able to show a full screen throughout the demonstration, thank you for your patience. That is the G-Volution story. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, very interesting, uh, very interesting presentation there for a a technology that will that will bridge bridge the current situation to a future uh, net zero. So very interesting uh, thoughts and ideas there.